Hey everyone, I've made a lot of good progress on that, that automated chessboard I've been working on and I uh, just kind of want to show off a little bit of uh, what I got working. Let's take a look. I finished up adding the x-axis right here, that's the one holding the uh, electromagnet here. And I added some homing switches, there's one right there, so that when the, uh, when the Arduino power cycles like this, it'll home everything. Oh, focus. It'll home everything and find out exactly where position zero is. The other homing switch is over here. So now it's at zero, zero. I've also added two new move types to it. So right now this reads commands over serial, over that USB, and feeds into the Arduino. Um, so if you just enter positional data, let's send it to 500, 500. That's uh, X 500 steps out and Y 500 steps out. When you leave everything else blank, it does it in the fastest, um, uh, the fastest move type that there is. And I call it the Bishop move right now because it staggers the step motors uh, one after another. So it kind of looks like they're both running at the same time. That sucked. All right, let's send it to 1,000, 1,000. So it's got a pretty good clearance right now, about 16 inches by 14 inches, which I think means we're going to have to use the little pieces so the, um, so the pieces can go in between them when they get, you know, uh, captured and whatnot, or the, the knights will have to move in between the pieces. Uh, th these bigger pieces, like this, uh, they need stronger magnets to be able to move because they're heavier, they're made out of metal, and they just, the, the radius uh, is too big, so I'd either have to file them down or something, um, and even then, it's having problems with two pieces getting close to each other. They interfere with each other and move around. So we're using... Oops! Oh. <laughs> we're using smaller pieces like this. Um, so hopefully, hopefully they'll look pretty cool. So in addition to just the fast move without an electromagnet, if you enter in positional data... Uh, let's send it to 1,000. Focus. 1,000. 100. 1,000. Zero, zero. On that string turns on the electromagnet so when you move it'll move the piece we can move the uh, we can move the arm again let's move it back to let's move it all the way back to zero zero the electromagnet isn't engaged anymore leaves a piece right there Here's one last move here just to show this. I think this is pretty cool. We're having some issues with um, with the pieces sticking. As you can see, when the magnet's on, uh, it's it lowers the move. Oh shit! We'll do one more move here because uh, this is just so cool. Ah oh, shit! Come on, come on. Oh shit! What the? So I think we're gonna need to coat the glass with something. I don't know if maybe Teflon or print out paper. I know paper has um. Uh, less friction than the glass does, but we're having issues with uh, pieces getting left behind, especially with the bigger ones. Uh, so that's something we're gonna have to play with um, pretty soon here. But this is all looking pretty good. This is a lot more. I got a lot more done this weekend than I thought I would. Uh, so yeah, pretty excited about that. So after we've gotten all those problems figured out, Um, so after we've gotten those problems figured out, I'm going to be putting an array of reed switches underneath the glass. Those reed switches are activated magnetically, um, and so there'll be an, uh, a reed switch per square. Um, so the Arduino will be able to process part data, um, like the locations of the pieces, and send that piece data to the Raspberry Pi. The Arduino won't know what, you know, what piece is what, um, but the Raspberry Pi will say, oh, hey, like, this bishop disappeared here, and then or another part appeared here, that bishop must have moved. So that uh, the Raspberry Pi program, I'm probably writing that in Python, it's going to be a wrapper, will send that part data to an actual chess engine. Um, it's going to be UCI compliant, so uh, I think that's Universal Chess Interface Protocol. There's a lot of different chess engines that can be used, so that means that you can swap out any chess engine you want to use, and this program should, wa you know, should run it just fine and um, should be able to play against it. Um, Interestingly enough, so uh, I didn't know anything about chess engines going into this, but uh, at least UCI chess engines, they don't remember anything. They, it's literally just an, it's an engine that says you give it board data and you say, hey computer, what's the best move to take? 
and it says this is the best move and then and it's done and then it forgets everything so you have to my my program is going to have to you know have an array keep part data um remember where all the pieces are and stuff like that and check move legalities and stuff because uh you can feed anything you want into a chess engine it's not going to tell you yes or no it's just going to do it um and as soon as you feed that data in it tells you the next best move and then it's done then it forgets everything the whole board it disappears so uh, my Py I'm probably running a program in Python that I'll keep track of all that stuff. Maybe have a little like um, Raspberry Pi like display on there so you can have a little board. I don't know. I haven't really figured that stuff out yet. I'm just kind of winging it. This whole project, I'm just kind of winging it. I don't know how to program in Python. I'm winging that. So um, that'll be interesting. Uh, yeah, I've made a lot of good progress this weekend. Um, I'm kind of surprised it works, to be honest. It, it's, I've just thought everything so shoddily. So, um, yeah, if you have any uh, comments or questions, uh, hit me up. It always makes you feel good to know that people are watching this stuff and people care about the things that I'm doing. So, thank you for watching. Uh, have a good day.